Hi there! Today we'll be recreating this look, which is a heavy coloured eye and fairly neutral skin otherwise. I'll be starting off with a primer. This one is by Tom Ford and primer is really good at helping to give your foundation and the rest of your makeup something to adhere to and last. I'll be going in with concealer and just kind of brightening up the uh, darker areas of the face as well as kind of pinpointing anywhere that needs to be highlighted such as the nose, the forehead and the chin. I'll be blending that in with a dry beauty blender, dry so that it doesn't um, disperse or take away the concentration of the product and um, but still blends it out nice and naturally. Jumping in now we'll be going onto foundation. Um, I'll just be doing a light layer of mine. This is my favorite so you would choose whatever you use on a daily basis or your favorite foundation and I'll be taking a little bit on the back of my hand and this big buffing brush by Real Techniques and just gently buffing that into the skin. Jumping onto the eyes I'll be using this palette, uh, the Amrezi palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills and I'll be focusing on these tones of shades and this purple shade. As you can see they're nice kind of muted and warm browns and I'll be taking this uh, fluffy brush, this is a blending brush, and taking the caramel shade into the crease of the eye, creating just kind of a soft and smoky diffused look to help transition the rest of the colors on the eyelid. It also helps to lay down a transition color so that you can very gently buff and blend the rest of your colors in. Now that's a clean blending brush and I was just softening out the edges once again. I'll be taking the darker brown shade on a flat shader brush and kind of packing it onto the outer corner of the eye, which I'll then blend out and soften a bit more. Um, the reason I do this is to kind of give the eye a bit of a gradient effect. As you can see, it's kind of lighter in the center and then darker as it moves out, which really helps to define the lash line and almost give the eye some more shape when we go in with the color so it doesn't look so monotonous and it just has a bit more of a dimension to it. I'll be taking whatever's on that brush and placing it under the eye, I'm not really adding any more but just kind of helping to duplicate the shades. Taking this shimmery shade on a fluffy blending brush again, um, these are very important to any uh, makeup kit, I'll be just going over the brow bone with that um, to kind of soften it out once more. Now you'll just need a dense kind of um, tightly packed brush for this. Um, it doesn't have to be round but um, to have the dense bristles means that you'll be able to pack the color on nice and concentrated and retain as much of the pigmentation as possible. So I'll be as you can see taking that purple and laying it over the mobile part of the lid which is basically the part of the eyelid that moves when you blink. Now I know that this look uses a lot of different brushes so what I tend to do if I don't have enough with me is I'll just take a cotton pad and I'll just wipe the brush against it um, just removing as much of the loose pigment as possible so that when I then go in it doesn't kind of make my colors too muddy. Now I'll just be taking whatever was left of that purple and placing it under the eyelid as we did before. Once again this kind of just helps to share the look throughout the whole eye and with that clean blending brush from earlier I'm just going out once again and softening it all up. Now I'll be going in with this MAC pigment, um, it's a very very vibrant and bright violet shade and back with that um, dense brush I'll be taking just the tiniest bit as you can see what comes out of the cap is more than enough and I'll be applying that over the purple shade. Um, as you can see it's, it's a very 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 bright and pigmented um, shade to use and really brings out the purple in the look. So once again with the same blending brush used before with the browns and the caramel tones, I'll just be softening out the edges again and um, diffusing the look a little bit more. Again the trick with most eye looks is just blend, blend, blend. Soften it out and keep it um, soft and smoky. And this is what it'll look like now and without any eyeliner or mascara. And again I'll just be taking that purple purple pigment and placing it under the eyes to even out the look. From here I will be jumping into the eyebrows. I'll be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow on a flat angled brush. 
um, and just brushing through the eyebrow hairs. I'm just going to go with a very kind of natural brow today, given that the eye look will be so heavy with lashes and mascara and liner. Um, just filling in any sparse areas, such as the scar in my eyebrow or any gaps that I have, and just giving it a bit more of a defined but still natural shape. Now I'll be using this Gimme Brow by Benefit, which is a tiny, tiny mascara wand, which has um, a brown tinted product and formula which contains small fibers which catch onto the hairs and kind of fill in any other spots that you have. Now I'll be going in with a pencil eyeliner and this is slightly uncomfortable but has maximum impact to line the waterline and I'm also going to do what's something that's called tight lighting which is where you basically line the waterline of the upper lash. Now as you can see here it's it gets easier with the more practice that you have but um, I've kind of slowed it down so that you can see it's just running it over the top lash line. Now I'll be taking this uh, felt tip liner, this one's by Lancome, and I'll be creating a wing. It's nothing too dramatic, it will get, probably get lost in if you do lashes as well, if you wing it out too far. Plus the uh, focus of the look is the purple, so we'll keep it as a very toned down wing for today. But as you can see, just the trick with it is to kind of angle the brush in such a way that you can keep your hand as steady as possible. Um, a lot of the times it's easier if you kind of hold the skin taut around the eye, um, but as you like. Um, as you can see, just a nice soft wing um, is the best way to kind of round out the eye. I'll be adding some mascara as you can see, which is fairly simple. Um, if you have any questions regarding mascara, such as suggestions, recommendations, or even techniques, let me know. Um, and I'll be doing it on both the top and lower lashes. And the reason I do it on the top lashes before applying false lashes is that it will allow my false lashes to last longer without any product affecting the quality of them. I'll be jumping back onto the skin just to kind of increase the quality of it after, you know, so much work on it um, and keeping it clean with such a heavy eye. We're going in with bronzers and highlighters now. Both of these are by MAC, and I'll be using this uh, face paint brush by Zoeva, and just kind of concentrating it into the contours of the face. Nothing too crazy. Um, as you can see, just if you make the kind of fish face, I suppose, and you're concentrating it in uh, just under the cheekbone, um, and then kind of bringing it up slightly around the temples, you'll be able to give a bit more dimension to your face. I'll be jumping in with a highlighter and this fan brush and uh, picking it up slightly. Of course I'm so pale, highlighters rarely work on me, but um, if you get caught in the right light, at least it'll look nice. <laughs> I'll be jumping in with blush as well. I figured that with purple uh, eyes, a nice soft pink cheek um, could really round out how feminine this look is. Jumping into the best part of the look, which is always the lashes. These are by Huda Beauty. And I'll just be using the Duo Lash uh, Glue um, and removing them from the packet. Now the best way to do it is to hold them like this and pull them away from the, um, the packet. If you peel them away, you could really damage the lash band, which means that when you apply them to your eye, they're not going to sit quite right. So I'll be placing a tiny bit of glue onto just the back of the plastic. Once it dries, you can just put it away putting my hair up because this is some serious makeup work going on here and I'll be using my tweezers and just running uh, the lashes along the glue just getting a nice thin layer Now the trick with lashes and helping them to work the first time every time is to let them get a bit tacky first you can always tell which side to apply it on because the longest lashes will always be on the outside of the eye so once it's dry after about 30 seconds not totally dry just slightly tacky you'll be able to place them on and work them onto the lash and just using tweezers and kind of you know being a bit finicky and picky with them it took a lot longer than this but if I showed you the whole thing this video would take half an hour and just kind of letting them settle if I were to keep applying mascara after this once I take the lashes off they'll be very hard to clean and then the next time I use them they won't be as um, new Jumping onto the lips, I decided on something a bit more neutral but still defined. I'm using this Whirl Lip Pencil by MAC and just defining the lips and um, filling them, which I'll then follow with the um, Twig Lipstick by MAC, just kind of 
bonding it onto the lips and following with a Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss. And that brings to a close this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you got some ideas. Um, this is applicable to any eye shade if you decide to, to use green, purple, blue, pink, it doesn't matter, however you like it. And for more, make sure you check out my Instagram and my website and I will see you next time. And that's how summer passed over.